this looked like a tough, tough ball game, but Lafayette came with a with a different attitude, a different energy, and different plays. Yeah, they came with a different package, and I think the Jason Penza package with the run, the zone read stuff, really paid dividends, caught the, the Pioneers off guard. And then you had a really, I think, a healthy Jamar Curtis coming off some rib injury. He was fantastic. You add in Troy Bruce there as well. Lafayette didn't obviously light it up in the air, but on the ground, close to 270 yards rushing. That offensive line was fantastic today, and the defense did just enough. Lafayette did not turn it over. They ran the football, and they scored first, and that equals a win for the Leopards. We're going to have a chance to chat with uh, head coach John Troxel. Megan is out there once he has a chance to gather his troops together. Just to give you some numbers here today, Lafayette rushed for 297 yards. Maybe we can get a quick check to see the last time that they rushed for more than that. 297. 297 five yard, 5.3 yards per carry is... Let's go to the highlights and we'll continue our discussion. Sure, absolutely. Lafayette had a lot of those today. Remember, zero points last week. Today they put up 31 and probably should have had a few more, but Jamar Curtis, he was electric today. Watch him punch it in here to get that early 7-0 lead. But they come right back and the Pioneers showed you that they can run the football as well. Really nice job in there by Madison. He had 77 yards plus today. And then Troy Bruce, he'll show you what he can do. Explosion, 14-0 Lafayette. 14-7 Lafayette, they come right back and answer that touchdown by the Pioneers here. And then Lafayette turns it, uh, gets a turnover here, Tim O'Hearn. He's done it all season long. He's been their best defensive lineman. He gets the turnover there as you get somebody to jump on it. And then again, it's Jamar Curtis just exploding into the end zone. Lafayette with a two score lead. And then a turnover here, or excuse me, a, uh, Lafayette can't convert on fourth down and they give the football back. And then you see a really nice run by Madison, a 27 yard. Touchdown run cuts that lead to 21 to 14. Lafayette added a field goal at 24-14, and then Sacred Heart only point scored in that third quarter was a sure field goal by the uh, kicker for Sacred Heart. And then Jason Penza, hopefully we can get a chance to talk to him, but he ended up with close to 50 yards rushing here. Dean, one of the few passes that he had thrown today, he completes it to Avery Jones. Avery Jones almost gets in the end zone. And then a little tush push by Dean DeNoble, and Dean's a happy man. He needed to come back and have a good game here. And Lafayette right there trying to get back in the game is Sacred Heart. They throw the ball to Hillman. I think that was Hillman's only catch of the game. And here you'll see a ball that, again, just getting the ball inside. Mikowski, he was their leading rusher today. Did a great job getting out of the traffic. Here's a big time play we thought was an incomplete pass or at least over the line of scrimmage. Ryan Brown gets on the ball. Should have been not whistled if they're going to call it that. And Ryan Brown would have been off to the races, but Lafayette's defense holds on. And a really nice win for Lafayette and a bounce back. Let's go down to Megan. She is with Coach Troxel. Thanks so much, Gary. Coach, we talked about Jason Penza at the half of just how dynamic he is and what he's able to bring to your offense. When you think of what he was able to do today, nearly 50 yards rushing, he's a freshman. This was his first collegiate game. Yeah. How impressed are you with his performance today? Listen, he's he's worked really hard. I mean, that room of quarterbacks, it's a great room. They, they encourage each other. They help each other. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of the way he played. He came out and played hard, but, you know, it's just one game. You know, we got to... You know, get ready for next week. Another unit that played extremely hard today was your offensive line, a, a unit that's been riddled with injuries throughout this season. Your team was able to have nearly 300 yards rushing today. When you think about the unit of your offensive line, how have they really weathered the storm of injuries this season? Again, I mean, it's a credit to Coach Ball and, and to the kids. I mean, you know, I mean, they've battled and they've just worked hard tirelessly. You know, I mean, Sean Wilson in there for the first time today did a really good job, I'm sure. And, you know, I mean, Sean Kinney's just a freshman. So and we got some side of the ball who, who just keep battling, you know, and uh, we're going to need them to play well down the stretch here. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Jamar, congratulations to you and your team today. I was just talking with your coach about your offense and, and what your team was able to do, nearly 300 yards rushing. Could you tell me, what, what did you see open up offensively for you today? Um, last week, uh, we had a tough week, as everybody knows. Uh, we had a, so like when you face adversity, look at yourself. And I feel like as an offense, we did that. Um, we, re we regrouped this week, and we came out, and we said it was going to be the more physical team, and I think we did that. Megan, he had 198 total yards. You had 198 total yards for you and yourself. I mean, what were you feeling today with the, those open spaces given? 
Um, I just feel like I had to make plays for my team. Uh, my team trusted me, um, and I'm going to come out here and give them my all every time. The O-line did a great job of blocking the day. Uh, we had some guys step up. Uh, Sean Kenny, he doesn't play center. The freshman stepped in. Sean Wilson went to right tackle. Uh, and I'm just proud of those freshmen for growing up. And speaking of some freshmen, you had you played a little bit with one of your freshman quarterbacks, mm -hmm. Jason. Could you describe what it's like playing with him? I mean, we need to put you two both out there and run a race to see who's going to win with the speed that he's got. <laughs> yeah, it's great having him. Uh, it's a switch up in our offense. Um, defenses can't really key in on me with him on the field because if you want to key in on me, uh, my guy right here is going to run it, take it for a touchdown. So it's kind of like you have to pick your poison. So I feel like uh, he was a great addition to the team today, and I'm proud of him too for growing up. Thanks so much, Jamar. Thank you. All right, well, Jason, congratulations on your win today. Leading into this week, your coach told me to just wait to see your speed today. For sport athlete growing up today, you were given the opportunity to, to take a hold of the offense. What was it like out there? This was your first collegiate game today. Yeah, it was. Uh, I just say it was a lot of fun. So, like, <clears throat> I've never got to, like, compete with these guys, like, on the field yet. Yeah. So, you know, you do it a lot in practice, but it was a ton of fun being able to play with all your guys that you, like, practice with every week. So, How is this a step forward for you for growing a little bit? Fun indeed, but you had to be the leader out on the field. Uh, I mean, it was a step forward, like, growing up, kind of having to take charge and uh, through practice getting, a, like, a grip on, you know, what plays are coming in, like, taking control of the time on the clock and everything like that. So it definitely was a step forward. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't too big of a jump, I would say that. But. Okay, well we saw you running a ton today, but we gotta know you got an arm as well. I yeah, I mean <laughs> I can throw the football. Yes, I can. <laughs> we'll wait to see. Thank you so much. Thank Congratulations so much. again. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Gary and Gary and John. All right, Megan. Great interview. Great job today. Uh, we'll send it back down in just a moment. I do want to point out that the rushing yardage, 297. The last time we rushed for 200 yards, 200 plus, was against Maris this year. The last time we rushed for 250 plus was against Fordham back in 2018. And the last time we rushed for 300 plus yards was against Bucknell in 2023. So a bit of a milestone here today for the Leopards as uh, just a good, solid football game. Mike, these are fun to do. Yeah, and, and Lafayette, we talked about what they needed to do. They put it all together. It was special teams. It was uh, um, offense. It was defense. It was complimentary football, and it wasn't about Sacred Heart today. It was about Lafayette, and I'm really proud of those coaches. And the way Jamar said it, we had to look in the mirror, and they came up with different wrinkles, and they, uh, I think they pulled out a great win for them, and this could launch them down the stretch, and especially in the next week with the big ball game against the Crusaders. Well, we'll be here for that one at 1230. Mike and I will be in the booth, and the big three will be down on the sidelines. So who better to finish things but the big three for mike and myself and for john beat bowman thanks so much for spending time with us now spend some time with john phil and megan thanks so much gary well coming into today guys the big storyline was how would lafayette bounce back how are they going to face the adversity that they faced last week and they more than bounced back in Absolutely. today's win i had the opportunity just right now to stop to talk to jason penza a little bit and Boy, he is he's youthful indeed. Yep. However, he didn't look like that on the field. No, he looked like a seasoned vet a little bit. Yes, he did, absolutely. And I think we talked about it pregame, you know, that we had to come out and run the ball. Yeah. Uh, we did, but I don't think we expected, you know, the packages that, that they brought in. And they mixed it up, uh, brought some, you know, different personnel in, obviously, with, with Jason. Um, and, you know, obviously it worked. Yeah, worked indeed. Obviously, you want to talk about Jason Penza, you have to do that. Uh, you know, he's he was a four-sport, four sport, basketball, baseball, football, and track, which you can understand. <laughs> we uh, saw that. <laughs> absolutely. The other thing is, again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it, yeah. it deserves repeating. The offensive line was incredible. Uh, Sacred Heart actually ran about 58 plays. We had 58 rushing plays. Yes. That was a dominance up front and Sacred Heart could get no penetration and that was the key. So uh, kudos. We needed this team to bounce back. That's what we all talked about mm -hmm. and bounce back they did. So we talked a little bit with Coach about how dynamic now the offense is throwing in Jason Penza, right? You're running the yep. ball a little bit more. So I'm curious, Phil, I want, want to talk to you, right? The offensive yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. you <laughs> add in these little ripples here and there, how much confidence does that give you then as anyone within that unit of whatever play it's yeah. we're given it's going to be a solid play well, it gives you a lot of confidence but it also makes it you much harder to prepare for yeah. right uh you know you got guys are going to see the tape uh, but they're not going to know like what to expect and you also talked about jason and he, he added in there that he can throw the ball so yeah. maybe we'll we'll see that <laughs> in the future uh but again just a great job you know uh 
as you said, offensive line, spectacular, right? That's where we needed it. They came, uh, you know, we ran the ball for almost 300 yards. Uh, that's what we needed, and now we're now that's going to open up the, the passing game in the future as well. Yeah, you know, uh, while we're talking about Jason Penza, uh, we have our weekly media luncheon on Tuesdays, and we get a chance to talk to some of the players and coaches. The question for me, uh, for John Troxell, is there such a thing as a package <laughs> with DeNoble and Penza and, uh, and Jamar Curtis in the backfield? Don't give anything away here. <laughs> no. <you know>. I, <laughs> well, hey, if I thought of it, I'm sure that Holy Cross can think of it. <laughs> That's going to be a huge game next week. Holy Cross has been uh, a, a tough team all year long. It's a Patriot League contest. This was a good building block toward that game. Well, since you mentioned the matchup, Holy Cross next weekend, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time is kickoff. I'll leave it with this with both of you. What challenges do the Crusaders bring in next week? Well, again, just uh, just another Patriot League game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, going to be that added pressure. Uh, they're always going to be a tough tough team to play against. Um, you know, we just got to bring our just build on this game and, and bring it next week. I know that one little thing at halftime turned out to be a little thing because they didn't do it again, but. Coach Strox was a little worried about the big play. Mm -hmm. Holy Cross has been capable. They've got great quarterback play, a wide open offense. Next week, the key will be limiting their home runs. Limiting the big plays. But the big three are going to be back in action <laughs> next week. That is for certain. <laughs> Our pregame show will be on ESPN Plus starting at 1 o'clock Eastern time next week. And don't be afraid to come and hang out with us during pregame. Kickoff is slated for 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. The Lafayette Leopards are back in the winning column. We cannot wait to be with you next week. From John Leone, Phil Lang, and myself, Megan Caffrey, we will see you next week.